Yo, what up, everybody? My name is Trickster Shadow. I'm a variety killer main with over 8,000 hours in the game. And today, I wanted to talk about the Boon perk, which is a Survivor Hex perk called Circle of Healing. If you don't know what it does, essentially, a Survivor can go up to a, uh, not even a Hex perk, well, a Hex perk, and also a Dull perk, uh, Dull Totem. And they can go up to a Dull Totem or a Hex Totem, and they can bless it. Basically, they stand in front of it for 14 seconds, and then it applies the perk effect. And now for Circle of Healing, it makes it to where they can heal at 90% the rate. Uh, whether they are healing somebody else or healing themselves. And so it makes it about where survivors can heal another person in about eight seconds, and then they can heal themselves in about 16. And you can also heal yourself without self-care, which is pretty substantial. Now, that is very strong. And uh, initially, when I saw the perk, and I think a lot of the people's reactions to the perk is that that's maybe OP, uh, because it's pretty substantial. Uh, but of course, it's within only 28 meters of the totem, and the killer can snuff out the perk. Basically, the killer can go up to the perk and spend about a second and a half, two seconds, in order to deactivate the perk. Upon that happening, the survivor has to go back to the totem, spend another 14 seconds, and re-bless it. And I thought before I tested it that the perk was going to be OP, and then through my testing, what I discovered is that my matches weren't necessarily harder I noticed that people were healing more often, but I also noticed that the matches were lasting longer. And the reason why is because people were, I have, was having like matches with like three or four people were running these and people were able to heal up a lot, but because they were investing so much time in order to get their perk up, like it, it didn't really matter as much because you spend the 14 seconds blessing the totem, but also you got to find the totem first. And so in most matches, you're probably, even if you find the totem instantly, uh, it's going to take you about 30 seconds in total to bless it and find it. And that's if you spawn like right on the totem. And that 30 seconds is 10 seconds shy from half of a gen. And so that's pretty substantial in terms of like gen pressure. And in all reality, it's probably going to take you upwards of like 40, 45 seconds, if not more, in order to find a totem and bless it in, in a game, unless you're running a like, small game and you happen to spawn right next to a totem. And then if a killer snuffs it out, then you're going to have to go back and rebless it. And I heard a lot of people say, like, oh, well, if I snuff out the perk, then I'm, like, I'm, I'm wasting too much time. But the way I thought about it is I thought about it a lot like Huntress. Uh, Huntress, like, she has to reload her hatchets. And typically, you don't want to, like, do that mid-chase uh, because then the survivor can just run away. And so the way that I was playing against it is I would see or hear because they also make a little bit of a noise uh when you hear them i would see or hear a a boon totem and i would take a note of it in my head and then after i ended the chase with the person that i was chasing because obviously i'm going to be in chase the majority of the game i hooked the person and then went back to the boon totem deactivated it and then went on my way and through doing that i really didn't notice any time loss uh just because most of the time would be deactivating I'm deactivating it on my way to do something else. And so I just waste two seconds and I just go on my merry way. And then because I waste two seconds, that's going to be wasting 14 seconds of base time plus blessing totem, plus however long it takes them to traverse to bless that totem again. So there's only a limited amount of totem, limited amount of totems. And so it actually wasn't as bad in my gameplay as, as much as I thought. And then I saw this video, and this video scared me a lot. This is Scott Jun's video. I'm going to link this down in the, the description down below. And essentially what Scott Jun shows in this video, I'll play a little bit. And uh, if you want to see proof, uh, here, here is a test I did with uh, Zubat and a couple of other people. So if you're going against a survive with friends with this build, uh, you literally cannot down people. You, you just, you can't down them. They can heal faster than you can actually hit them as a killer. And that's very scary. Uh, when I saw that, I was like, oh my god, am I not considering something? And he's even running Sloppy Butcher in this video. But the thing is, and it, I don't believe it's said in this video, I've watched it a couple times, and I didn't hear it, and uh, I didn't see it in multiple multiple videos that I saw on Twitter, for example, where I was seeing a bunch of these videos of people healing faster than the killer can recover. Uh, the reason why this is happening, and the reason why all the Twitter videos that you'll see are on the game, uh, the, the game map, the Jigsaw map, is because the totem effects stack and the game map is one of the easiest maps to have totems overlap and so if you can get three totems within 28 meters of each other you can have 270 percent because it's 90 percent each you can have 270 percent healing speed in one particular spot on the map 
and that's very strong because especially if you combine that with like with all these survivors uh, in this match and also the survivors that were in my testing were running healing builds and so on top of their already healing speed uh they also have the 270 percent uh increase as well and so they're able to heal incredibly fast uh because i believe the totems even surpass the normal healing restriction because normally the healing uh, caps out uh at least if you're healing an injured survivor if you're healing slugs it doesn't cap out but if you're healing an injured survivor it has a cap to it and so that's one thing that I found a little bit disingenuous. Uh, I, I'm not saying like anybody's a bad person for doing it. I don't think anybody's doing it maliciously, but I think it's a little bit disingenuous to say that the perk is OP when a specific niche scenario of the perk is overpowered. Uh, now, I think the simplest way to fix this is not to nerf the perk. It's just to make it to where the perk doesn't overlap. And then I think that's fine. Uh, and what I wanted to test, and I did test it, what I wanted to test is, is this even possible? Uh, is it even possible to hold the game hostage? Because that's one of the points that Scott uh, makes up in his video. It, it, that it's, ho it's possible to hold the game hostage, essentially. Uh, just heal so fast the killer can never down anybody. And so I decided to take it upon myself and actually try to do that. Like, I tried to get people in my killer friends matches uh, to see if it was possible. Oh, my, v my, my VLC player is crashing. Thank you, VLC. There we go. Uh, but I wanted to see if it was actually possible to do this in matches. To actually... Like, hold the killer hostage. And so what I did is I tried it first. And this was before I saw the video that... Like, uh, before I saw Scotchin's video. And so I wanted to try this out. So you can see I'm having somebody bless the totem. And then I'm going to have the survivors. All of these people are running healing builds. The, the Yun Jin is running leader as well. So that everybody also gets a 25% buff to healing. And so I wanted to see if they could block the totem and prevent me from getting it. And you'll see that with one totem, they're able to heal really fast. In fact, they heal faster than I can blood wipe right there. But because I got inside their collision, they couldn't heal as as well because I was body blocking the heal. And then even then, I was able to get a little bit closer and I was able to hit the person that was body blocking the totem and I could snap out the totem. And so in that situation, like if everybody's body blocking, they can't even really do it effectively because you lose your collision when you swing. And so you can actually body block somebody from healing and you can get closer to the totem. And even in this scenario, this is assuming that you have three or four survivors that are not doing gens and are just protecting the totem. So these people aren't doing the objective. They're just protecting the totem. And so I don't really think this is OP because they're not doing anything. And even then, if they aren't doing anything, then you can still, like, you can get through them and snuff at the totem and negate their perk and negate what they're doing. And so I don't really think it's a hostage scenario. And I went even a step further and I actually played out a match. I had my my viewers get into a discord call so that they could be a four man swift with comms and i had them run this particular build that would be the hostage build and i played it out i played it like a normal match to where i have no perks as wraith i just played perkless wraith on the game and i told them to all run maps so that they can find the totems that they that they need to do in order to hold me hostage and they kept on getting the totems but every time that they would get a totem i like in my normal chases like right here in a normal chase that i had i found one of the totems that they were trying to bless and so i go over here and i knock this person off and they go away <laughs> and i proceed and i keep on doing my chases and you can see that they're here oh my god there's another totem and before i do anything else i spend two seconds kicking it and then I go back to the hook. And then let's just skip ahead again. I'm over here. I just got done with the chase. And while I was in the chase, I saw this totem over here. And so I snuff it out before I go pick up the survivor. And they actually do manage to pick up because they're all running healing builds. Of course, they're all running like Wiggle of Desperate Measures body. <laughs> uh, I still managed to get somebody and I hook them. And I just negated one of their perks, and they're going to have to spend 14 seconds to re-enable that perk on top of the traversal time it takes to get there. 
And then by the time these survivors end up getting it, and I end up stuffing up their purse a couple more times during this entire endeavor. By the time they're able to get their builds to actually work, I am at six hooks and I have already killed one person. You can see there's one person dying on hook. I'm at six hooks. And they actually have managed to get their totems up. There's a totem to the left that they have enabled that we saw before. And I could go over and just snuff it out immediately. But for the sake of testing, I try to doubt them to see if I could. And I can't. They can pick up faster than I can do anything. And so in order for them to get this off, I had to get... They had to lose six hook stages. <laughs> you see me explaining the video. Uh, they had to lose six hook stages in the survivors... Uh, one of their survivor teammates in order to get this build to work. So I don't even know necessarily. And even if like they do get this build to work, the totem that is activating this is right next to me. And even if it wasn't right next to me, if it was on another wall, I know it's within 28 meters. And so I can go and stuff it out and they can't re-enable that perk faster <laughs> than I can down them. It takes 14 seconds in order to do it. And they got to run over there to do it. And even like this, I tell them to body block this totem since they can heal so fast. I believe I tell them to body block the totem to see if they can prevent me from getting it. I believe I do at one point. And they can't. Like, you can see, like, I'm trying to hit them. And then what ends up happening here is I keep on dying this person. They keep on picking them up. And then I believe what happens is not only do I body block the David, but this Lori also starts self-caring because that's one of the effects of the totem that you can heal yourself and invest them up. And so even like player error, like because of the self-caring thing, if you manage to body block a little bit, then they'll start healing themselves. And that's just enough time to where it just doesn't matter. And so I don't think this perk is OP. I really don't. I think it's strong. I think it's good to have strong survivor perks. I think that people are just so used to the same survivor perks being strong and they're afraid of more perks being strong. But I think if we're going to have perks that people are going to run besides the dead hard, besides the unbreakable, besides the decisive strike, besides the borrowed time, besides everything that everybody already runs, you need to have perks that are strong. And this perk, I feel like is pretty strong, very counterable, and isn't broken. If anything, the most broken part of it is, is if you're running if the survivors are running three circle of healings on the game and they coordinate in such a way to where they can get all three of their totems activated at the same time and the killer doesn't snuff out any of their totems then and they're all running healing builds then in that situation they can heal faster than the killer can down them but that also requires them to all be in the same place so they're not doing gens and even if even if they get all those totems up, it's still 14 seconds per totem. And so on three totems, that's 42 seconds. That's a half a gen worth of progress that those survivors didn't put into, into generators just to get the totems up. And now if you factor in like the, even if like 20, 30 seconds, let's, let's say like 30 seconds it takes to, to find the totem plus the 14 to, to bless it times three, that's 132 seconds. The 132 seconds, which divided by 80, that is about one and a little bit more than a half of a gen. So like a gen in three quarters almost. And that's the time that you need to put in in order to get the the, the hostage situation. And even then, like it can be really easily countered. And so I really don't think that the hoopla about this perk is really needed. I feel like, if anything, just remove it to where it can't stack totem effects. The totems can't apply effects. That's such a nice situation anyway, is that it's never going to happen. At least, it's not going to happen often. So, like, who cares uh, if the totems can't stack effects anymore? And then just ship this to live. It's okay. I promise everybody will be okay if, if a survivor perk is strong. The meta needs to change somehow. And it, I would rather them add in strong perks or buff perks rather than just nerfing things and i think this is a good step in the right direction uh, i'll have another video out soon uh just talking about what i've seen in this patch and how i felt about it but other than that i hope you guys enjoyed the video and i hope to see you in the next one thank you all for watching